But first, last week it was revealed Defence Chief Angus Campbell was having another go at trying to remove the medals of soldiers, in particular the SAS, who had served in Afghanistan. Now, soldiers rightly are outraged. None of them have been found guilty of anything that would warrant such action. Yet that's where we are, with the presumption of innocence abandoned by the CDF's renewed attempts to remove their medals. Last time Campbell attempted such a move to remove the group citation from the Special Forces, Peter Dutton, the Defence Minister, at the time stepped in and stopped it from happening. This time round, though, the SAS, well, they're pushing back. As revealed in a Sunday Telegraph story on the weekend, SAS veterans are now questioning why senior officers who were then based in Dubai, including the Defence Chief Angus Campbell, why they received medals and citations, including, in Campbell's case, the Distinguished Service Cross, despite the requirement for the medal being uh, awarded in action. The anger of a number of current and serving soldiers has become the impetus for a push to have the International Criminal Court review the role of senior commanders during the Afghan campaign, including their blanket exoneration in the Brereton Report, which says, and I'll, I'll give it to you now, Special Operations Troop Squadron and Task Group Commanders bear moral command, responsibility and accountability for what happened under their command and control. That responsibility and accountability does not extend to higher headquarters. Joining me now to discuss this, former Army officer and 30-year ADF veteran to lawyer, Dr Glenn Kolomitz. Glenn, welcome to the program. This push to refer Good what night. happened in and around Brereton to the ICC, this is the matter on which you wrote your doctoral thesis. Why do you think the Brereton inquiry does not go a higher up in the chain of command? Peter, um, Major General Brereton gave blanket exemptions to the other Major Generals in charge of operations in Afghanistan based on a fundamentally flawed application of the law and a fundamentally flawed application of the command and control structures in Afghanistan. So, so the basis on which um, he, has, uh, he has said, he has exculpated essentially the higher commanders is, uh, mm -hmm. is flawed and, um, and warrants a revisit. I guess for, for people at home who aren't in the military, uh, the soldiers are wearing the heat out of the Brereton report, but the, the senior brassy officials, the officer class, are not. In the, the story I read on the weekend in the Sunday Telegraph, soldiers are saying that the whole treatment of this issue in Brereton is BS. That's what they're saying. They feel as though it's a witch hunt. Is that fair? Look, it is, I, I couldn't say whether it's a witch hunt or not, but it certainly is neglecting the higher command. And at the end of the day, international criminal law and the International Criminal Court, uh, the emphasis is on the higher command. It's, it's on fighting impunity, and uh, they fight impunity by going after the higher command. The, the International Criminal Court don't prosecute soldiers. They prosecute generals and politicians, Peter. So I can, I can understand uh, the, the frustration, and indeed uh, my... My research over a number of years bore bore that out. It, sh it showed this uh, this disparity between the the way we've approached this and the way the international community approaches this. Why do you think it's taken so long for for anything significant to come out of the Brereton report? I mean, it was seismic when it landed. I think it's uh, uh, put the, the cast a pall of suspicion across a lot of good soldiers who served in Afghanistan, served nobly uh, for Australia in Afghanistan. We know there's only one soldier so far who has been charged. Surely this has got to be brought to some sort of uh, termination point. Look, you're right, Peter. And um, and the administrative inquiry, which is what the Burton inquiry was, took a very long time. And admittedly, it was complex. And now it's uh, it's been it's rolled into a, a criminal investigation. And uh, again, criminal investigations can take a long time, but but that that time must have an impact, or does have an impact on on veterans, particularly special forces veterans and their families. So it's a very long process, and uh, as you say, one soldier has been charged. There may well be more to come, uh, but again, the investigators aren't looking at the higher chain of command. Uh, Angus Campbell, mm. the CDF, conducted a 
command accountability review um, uh, of himself, essentially. So in estimates just tonight, he, uh, he said that um, he <laughs> wouldn't agree, but it was put to him that he was marking his own homework. Well, that's, that's far from good enough, and that will be added to, uh, to any communications we have with the International Criminal Court. So just before we go, what next for your call for, uh, for an ICC review? Um, we'll be lodging what they call an Article 15 communication with the prosecutor asking of the ICC, asking him to conduct an own motion investigation into the higher command. He previously said he wouldn't look at, uh, at, the, the, at Australia because we were looking at it ourselves. But we're not looking at the higher command. The higher command itself has mm -hmm. said, CDF, nothing to see here, and Major General Brereton, nothing to see here. So, look, um, we'll lodge the Article 15 communication and, uh, and see where, where that takes us. Marking their own homework, you are not wrong. Glenn Kolomets, thank you for your time.